Problem one, the mass spectrum for a molecule has mass number 74. There are no isotope peaks to indicate the presence of chlorine or sulfur. And so the student uses the empirical rules to create a short list of po uh, possible molecular formulas below. These formulas all have the right mass and pass the rules. Okay, so mass number 74 and all of these choices seem to have that. IR of the sample indicates the presence of a carbonyl and a carbon-carbon double bond. Using this information, indicate which of the following molecular formula options is possible. As in the homework, indicate acceptable formulas with OK, and for those not possible, explain why they cannot be correct. So let's first remember uh, what a carbonyl and then carbon-carbon double bond are, because this question is essentially asking, can we create molecular structures from these formulas that are going to include both of these options. So first of all, what is a carbonyl? A carbonyl is any formed any form of a carbon oxygen double bond. This can uh, this can take form in multiple ways. You could have a you could have a aldehyde something like this. You could have a a carboxylic acid. Uh, you could have a amine or a amide. Uh, we could also have an ester. We'll do this. Okay. So, so here uh, the the carbonyl is really just this consistent part of all these structures. We're gonna want to have one of those carbon oxygen double bonds in our molecule, and then a carbon carbon double bond is just gonna be. Something like that. So here we're going to have two groups on our molecule that have unsaturations. So we're going to need two unsaturations. And a key uh, uh, part of this problem here is going to, be, going to be able to accurately determine how many unsaturations each of these molecules have. So first, let's, let's take a quick aside and talk about unsaturations. So in order to solve this problem, we're going to need to have a, a solid understanding of unsaturations and how to find how many unsaturations each molecule has. So first, let's just take a take a quick example of this molecule right here. This is four carbon atoms, and if it's fully saturated, we know it is going to have 10 hydrogen atoms. Each of these interior carbons are going to have two hydrogens, and then the exterior are going to have three because each carbon atom needs to have four bonds uh, in order to be neutrally charged. So here in an in a alkene molecule, we can alkane molecule, we can essentially predict exactly how many hydrogens we're going to need via 2n plus 2, where n is going to be the number of carbon atoms. And this makes sense because each, uh, each carbon atom, is going to essentially have two hydrogens attached to it other than the outside carbons that are going to have one extra hydrogen, right? So if we were to expand this to a hydrocarbon with, say, six carbons, uh, th this would have the interior carbons would each have two hydrogens. And then the outside would have three. And so now with 2n plus 2, this is 2 times 6 plus 2. We would expect uh, our number of hydrogen atoms to be uh, 14. And this is in a, a, a alkane molecule where we have no unsaturations. If we wanted to introduce a carbon-carbon double bond, we would need to remove two hydrogens. Because if we were to put a double bond across two carbon atoms... It would be adding, it would be like adding a bond to each one of those carbon atoms, right? So if we added one there, we would need to remove two hydrogens. So in this new molecule, now, now let's introduce our way of determining how many saturations we have. In this new molecule, we have two less hydrogens than we'd expect. So based on my number of carbons, I would expect two times six plus two number of hydrogens, but I only have 12. 
and then I can divide this by two and get my number of unsaturations. So this would be, uh, this would turn out to be one. So here in this term, I essentially have expected number of, uh, of hydrogens. This term is actual number of hydrogens. And then we know a, a unsaturation is going to um, cover two bonds. And for every two excess or for two missing hydrogens, we're essentially just going to have one unsaturation. So that's why we're dividing by two. So in this molecule, we know we're going to have one unsaturation. So for example, now let, let's take a look at this case. Let's say we were just presented, presented with uh, C7, ooh, that's not a C, C7H. 10. How many unsaturations are we going to have? Let's see, 2 times n, which is 7, plus 2, minus 10, divided by 2. Right, and this is going to give us 14 plus 2, 16, minus 10, 6, divided by 2. We'd expect to have 3 unsaturations. So above, that's kind of the, the method for determining number of unsaturations for a alkane molecule. Uh, but of course, we're not always going to have uh, uh, purely uh, hydrocarbon molecules. So how do we account for other atoms such as nitrogen and oxygen and such? So first, let me just introduce the full sort of math trick, and then we'll explain it. So number of unsaturations can be found from 2n plus 2 minus number of hydrogens and then plus number of nitrogens and then also minus uh number of halogens well i'll just call those x's where you know x is going to be that's a bad arrow x is going to be chlorine fluorine you know bromine iodide etc and then we're going to want to divide that by two and this is going to be our full expression for how many unsaturations we're going to want to have. Okay, so now let's look at uh, some molecules and try to get a conceptual understanding of why we have some of these terms in our equation. So let's look at this molecule with three carbons. We would expect this to have 2n plus 2 hydrogens, which would be 8. So we would have three hydrogens here, three hydrogens here, and then two hydrogens here. Now let's look at the case where we add in, well, not, not hydrogen, but where we add in some of these molecules and try to understand why we have plus number of nitrogens or minus number of halogens. If I were to add in a nitrogen, it would change this carbon to having two hydrogens, but it would also add in two more hydrogens uh, onto the nitrogen. So we know, because we know in a nitrogen in a neutral sense with a neutral charge is going to form three bonds. So in this scenario, nitrogen essentially effectively adds one hydrogen. If you add a nitrogen onto a molecule, it's going to add one hydrogen. It removed one off this carbon, but then introduced two no new ones that are going to be bonded to the nitrogen. In the case of a halogen, a halogen essentially acts exactly the same as chlorine or as a hydrogen I should say where um, it's going to be bonded to a carbon and it's electrically similar in the, in the sense of unsaturation is going to be similar to just adding another hydrogen so we're just going to minus it off from our number similar to how we do with hydrogens so now we have the the equation where we can find the number of unsaturations it's going to be two times the number of carbon atoms plus two Minus our expected number of hydrogens, plus nitrogens, minus halogens divided by two. And that's kind of just a quick overview on how we come to this equation. And uh, hopefully that kind of makes sense. So let's jump back to our problem now. So we're looking for, we're looking to create molecules that are going to have a carbonyl and a carbon-carbon double bond. So let's, let's go through 
we're going to need two unsaturations for each molecule. So let's first calculate the number of unsaturations for each and see if we can eliminate any easy answer choices. So I'm just going to call the number of unsaturations U. U equals 2 times 4, number of carbons, plus 2 minus hydrogens. And then divide that by 2. So 2 times 4, 8, plus 2, 10, minus 10, 0. Also notice how oxygens don't show up in our formula, and that's because, if you can imagine, so say we have we have this molecule, we would expect uh, three carbons, two N plus two, we'd expect eight hydrogens. If we were to add on an oxygen, oxygens like to form two bonds, and that essentially would just replace the hydrogen that we, we lost by adding oxygen. So oxygens um, are not gonna factor into the unsaturation formula, Oops. Okay. So here we're going to have zero unsaturations. With zero unsaturations, we're not going to be able to create a carbonyl or a carbon-carbon double bond. If we try drawing this, this would be four carbons, one, two, three, four, uh, and then off to oxygen. And if we tried fitting all these hydrogens onto here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, um, wait, oops, there should not be 3 on there. There we go, 10. We notice we, we're not going to be able to fit a double bond anywhere. So this is not a viable answer choice because we're not able to fit a carbon-oxygen double bond or a carbon-carbon double bond. Okay, let's go to the next one. Number of unsaturations is going to be 3 times 2 plus 2 minus 6 all over 2. So 3 times 2 is 6, plus 2 is 8, minus 6 is 2, divided by 2 is 1. We're going to have one unsaturation. Still not good enough. We're going to need we're going to need two unsaturations. And so let's try drawing this just to illustrate this. So say I have three carbons. Um, and let's say let's say I have the one unsaturation and it's on this oxygen right there. Perhaps I have a hydroxide over there. Um, and if we were to fit, we can fit our six hydrogens on something like that, right? And then there's the other one on the hydroxide. So we get one unsaturation, but we're, and we're getting the carbonyl, but we're missing the carbon carbon double bond, or it could be a different structure where you're, you're missing the opposite. Okay. Next one, let's go. Uh, uh, 2 times 3 plus 2 minus 10 plus 2, because we have two nitrogens, divided by 2, and let's see. Okay, so 2 times 3 is 6, plus 2, 8, minus 10, negative 2, plus 2, 0. So this one, once again, we're going to have no unsaturations. If we draw this, three carbon atoms, nitrogen right there, nitrogen right there, maybe... Um, and then we can fill in all of our hydrogens. There are six hydrogens right there. And then we know nitrogen is going to want three bonds, one of which is going to the carbons, and then it's going to need two more hydrogens to be satisfied. So there we have no unsaturations. Um, and when I'm drawing these structures, I'm just kind of showing you it's consistent that our, our math, our equation on the left is going to be consistent with if we try drawing it. So... Next one, U equals 2 times 3 plus 2 minus 3 minus 1. Fluorine is going to be, uh, in our mathematical sense, similar to a hydrogen, so we're just going to minus off 1 for that. Then oxygens don't show up. 2 times 3, 6 plus 2, 8 minus 3, uh, 5 minus 1, 4, 4 divided by 2, 2 unsaturations. So here, now we have two unsaturations, uh, and this one looks like it is going to be a viable choice. Let's propose a structure for this. So three uh, carbons. Uh, we're also going to want a... Actually, let's do this instead. Oh. I'm not going to put the carbonyl in the middle, simply because we. I know from other orgo, carbonyls typically don't go next to carbon-carbon double bonds. Um, let's see there. So we've got the three carbon atoms. 
uh, and then we're gonna want to we're gonna want a fluorine atom, and then three hydrogen atoms. So something like that, something like that, and then something like that. Um, sort of a strange structure with the carbonyl going off to the side, but that does satisfy what we're looking for. Okay, so this one is a potential option. Okay, let's go on to the next one. Unsaturations equal 2 times 3 plus 2 minus 6. Uh, oops, actually, hold on. I did times 3, but there's only 2 carbon atoms. 2 times 2 plus 2 minus 6 plus 2 nitrogen atoms. So we're going to do plus 2. Oxygens don't show up in the equation. Divide that all by 2. 2 times 2, 4, plus 2, 6, minus 6, 0, plus 2, 2, divided by 2, 1. 1 unsaturation, not good enough, we're going to need 2. I guess we can draw a structure again, even though it's getting a little repetitive. Actually, nitrogen right there, nitrogen right there. Um, we'll do, I don't know, hydroxide coming off of nitrogen, why not? I've been doing the hydrogens in red. I'll be consistent. Okay, three hydrogen, or four, five, six. Wait. Oh, there's one on saturation. That's why this wasn't working. Oops. I tried drawing it with zero, but there was, in fact, one unsaturation right there. We'll say there's one right there. Okay, now we have uh, three, four hydrogens. There we go. Now we have two more hydrogens for the nitrogen. And that's what that molecule could be. So uh, perhaps there's a carbon-carbon double bond, but no, no carbonyl. Okay, second to last one, U equals 2 times 2 plus 2 minus... 3, minus 1 for the fluorine, plus 2 for the nitrogens. 2 times 2, 4, plus 2, 6, minus 3, 3, minus 1, 2, plus 2, 4, 4 divided by 2 is 2, 2 on saturation is perfect. But I do notice one thing, we don't have an oxygen in this molecule, which means we could not even make the carbonyl if we wanted. Um... So instead, we, we could have something like this. Two carbons in the middle. Uh, nitrogens like that. Let's see, this is going to have two unsaturations. Um, okay, this molecule doesn't have a... Uh, a what was I saying? This molecule does not have a oxygen, so... I don't know if there's worth me trying to draw it, but... Something like this, maybe. How many? Oh, there we go. Okay, one. Okay, something like that, maybe. You got your two carbons in the middle, double bonds to nitrogens. That's got two two unsaturations, three hydrogens. Something like that, maybe. But it, it's not going to work because we can't. We don't have the oxygen to make the uh, carbonyl. Here we got two carbons, two times two plus two. Minus 2 for our number of hydrogens. Oxygens don't show up in this equation. 2 times 2 plus 2 is going to be 6. Minus 2 is 4. Divided by 2 is 2. 2 unsaturations. Uh, okay, we only have 2 carbon atoms, so we know there's going to have to be a double bond between the two. And then we're also going to need a, a carbonyl coming off one of those. Um... And then I guess we do something like this. Kind of a strange molecule, but... Um, I guess everything in that sense is kind of satisfied. Very strange looking thing. I don't know if that would exist in real life, but perhaps it could work. And then let's see, in the box of the right proposed structure for the molecule consistent with the experimental data, we found two candidates, uh, this one and then this one. Let's go with the top one because it looks substantially more normal. I'm going to redraw it. 
on the right side. Um, something like this. So we got the three carbons, one, two, three. We have the fluorine on the right there. Two unsaturations, and we got the carbonyl up top. And so this satisfies our mass number 74. And then we get two unsaturations, one of which is a carbon-carbon double bond, and then one of which is a carbonyl. So that satisfies our question.